Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and to the largest video for me to record. My complete collection tour, including all my current work in progress pages and all my completed pages. It's a very large video for me to record and as such it is split into six parts, focusing each part on one shelf of my collection. Each video is still a very long video, so I suggest that you grab a cup of tea or a coffee or some water, grab a snack and get comfy because this is going to be a big video. <laughs> so a little bit about me before we begin. My name is Amy, aka Amy Ward Art, the colorist behind this channel and also a live stream colorist on Twitch and YouTube as well. And I really love coloring. I started really getting into coloring when an autoimmune arthritic flare up caused me to lose sensation in my hand and not be able to grip a pencil. And I use coloring as a means to help with the damage that this flare up has caused to my hand. And in the process felt absolutely in love. I love being able to share different processes, different techniques, and create really beautiful, bright, happy, glittery pages about creating that wonderful, happy little bubble to escape to, especially when things get too tough. I'm based in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and I have a lot of coloring books. <laughs> yeah, so we've got quite a bit of a collection to go through. Shelf six, the final shelf to go through and undoubtedly the biggest shelf to go through. This is my Coloring Heaven collection. I have a lot of Coloring Heaven magazines. This shelf will take a while because it is undoubtedly my fullest shelf. It is at the point where I am maybe going to get one or two more Coloring Heaven books in there. I'm probably going to have to rearrange because they're not going to fit anymore. We're going to start with the unworked issues. So I'm hoping to get a few more of these done in 2024. And also, if you would like a complete flip through of any of these issues, while Coloring Heaven does have some excellent flip throughs that you can go and watch, I'm also happy to record one if you would like to see one in fuller detail. So I won't be going through each of these issues, just showing what I have. So this is the Kings and Queens collection by Jash Lee. Jash Lee is one of the artists I discovered for Colouring Heaven and I adore his work. So gorgeous. And there's lots of little information about the different Kings and Queens. So yeah, unworked. <laughs> we have the Cabbage Patch Kids collection, which is super, super cute. I definitely would like to colour at least one of these this year because I'd like to colour one like my nieces. No, well, it's now my nieces. It was my cousins. It's been passed on. The Cabbage Patch doll. Um, I didn't have a Cabbage Patch growing up. But I remember my cousin's one. Nouveau Fairies Special. This is one of the first issues that I own. I think it's one of the earliest. This is issue 72. I think issue 70 is my earliest issue. But this is by Herb Le Leonhard. Um, I just got his dragon books as well. And I didn't realize it was the same illustrator till now. So that's really cool. But yeah, really gorgeous style. I definitely would like to do a couple of these Faye in here. Especially with it being such an older issue as well. We have the wonderful Wizard of Oz. This is one of the later issues that I have picked up. Uh, this is another collection one. So the collection ones have 48, the specials have 40. Um, sometimes they have one artist, sometimes they're collaborations of several artists. It depends on the issue itself. So this one is all Fabiana Tree. They have some really sweet images in here. See, this one's <coughs> definitely on the two color list. We haven't quite made it there yet, but I would love to try and get something colored in this one. 
I want to work a lot more of my uncolored coloring books this year. Santa's workshop. So this one will be on hold until Christmas time again, more than likely. Um, I didn't quite get to this in the Christmas season of 2023. I was trying to, but we didn't quite make it. It's got some really interesting designs, so it's not really my forte. It's not really my cup of tea, but I do think it is still cute. And I can see like a lot of fun with markers in this one. So, and of course they're all single sided as well. So you can use markers in these magazines. Steampunk specials. This is another older one. This is issue 74. Sci-fi designs by Matt and Dawn Davidson. This one has some really cool grayscale ones as well. I was a little intimidated to color this one when I first got it, so it's been sitting on my shelf for a long time, but I've been working a little bit more on metals in 2023, and I'm feeling a little bit more confident about actually coloring in an issue like this. I just realized that my desk seems quite dark today. Eh, no, it's all right. Should be all right. <laughs> All right, we have the Coloring Heaven Collection Stained Glass. So this is one I nearly didn't purchase. These, the only Coloring Heaven issue I didn't purchase was the Mandela's issue, and then they released a separate Mandela's line. I do not get any of that line. Um, a, it's not available to me, but I genuinely am not interested in them. Um, but I did get this one because I did see Colouring Heaven's tutorial on how to colour stained glass and it really interested me so I decided when it came in I would grab it. If anything it'll be a good mindless one where I can just colour in sections with a marker and just have it as a mindless colour along. Adorable Animals by Sweater Cruz. This one is so cute. I love this little hedgehog. Some very simple, easy pages and some that are a little bit more complicated, but very, very cute. I can see markers being a lot of fun on these ones. Lots of bright colors, some sharp highlights. Yeah, very, very cute. Starry Night Special Designs by Wee Shan Ong I said in my 2023 video that I was going to pull this one aside and purposely work in it because I thought it was so gorgeous and I wanted to work in it straight away and it's still uncolored <laughs> yeah it is so stunning though it is such a stunning magazine so I just love flipping it for the art like I, it's just such beautiful line work that I just love looking at it as is and yeah so eventually we will get there but oh I love 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 all right we have the horses collection I was such a horse girl growing up um, I had this book that was, I think it was my mum's, but I kind of stole it, uh, when I was like 11 or 12, and I used to, it was a how to draw book, and it was all about horses, and it had so many different types of horses, and it was how to sketch them, and I went through and drew every single horse in that book. Uh, it was really, really instrumental in teaching me how to shade because it was themed towards adults and so it talked a lot about different techniques instead of kid books that didn't really cover these things. So yeah, as a 12 year old I just went through this entire book on a summer break and sketched every single horse and I really, really, really enjoyed doing so and it helped me develop a lot of skills, especially with pencil shading. So yeah, so this is why it's like, just reminds me so much of that time. So this is a collection of different designs by Cindy Al Sharuni and Dina Stone. All right, we have another collection issue, Sea Life. I am a huge fan of underwater scenes and water animals and water creatures, so of course I was getting this issue. It's just a shame it's still uncolored, especially because it has Rita Berman. Rita Berman is one of my, like I would like to get one of her books. And I just have not done so yet. 
but this has a couple of Rita Berman pages in it. And it's like, well, at least I can colour some if I could just pull this one out. <laughs> but yeah, we've got Rita Berman, Tim Jeffs, Ruby Charm colours, and even more. So there's some really neat pages in here. There's also a couple of these, like, word ones, which aren't my favourite thing in the world. But yeah, all sorts of interesting, interesting pages. Axolotl. Another one I said in 2023 I needed to colour in straight away. <laughs> this is Wildwood Witches Special by Steve Hutton. Stunning, stunning line work in this one. Again, it's another one with a little bit about it on the side, which is really, really cool. Yeah, another one I haven't worked in. Uh, it is another older one, I believe. Yeah, issue 85. So, gorgeous, gorgeous book though. And it doesn't have to be for Halloween, you know? It can be any time of the year. Alright, we have the Vikings special. Really neat line work again. And again with the information as well. It's really interesting. Designed by Hollow Moon Art. Again, why I love Colouring Heaven. You get such variety of artists. You never... You, like you can discover all these new people they often they do get some bigger names in but they can get in lots of little little artists as well or people you might not have heard of or yeah I find it really neat right Wingling special by Jasmine Beckett Griffith I think when I recorded the 2023 version of this video, this one had literally just been picked up. Like this was the issue, the newest issue in my collection. Or well, it was relatively new because I was really excited. There was a couple of dragons in here with dice. Um, and I was like, they're really cute. Yeah. Um, it is the Chinese Zodiac Year of the Dragon, so feel like we might need to do some dragons this year. This will be a good one for it. The Steampunk Animal Specials. So I think this one is another collection one. Yeah, so we've got some Coco Wyo, Sam Deacon, Fabiana Tree. Yeah, so this one is a bit of a collection one. This one's like... It's been a bit intimidating, Jennifer Zinnemann, because, again, metals, non-metallic metals. It's so easy just to grab, like, a metallic gel pen. But I've been working towards learning to get better with creating the effect of metal out of pencils instead of just grabbing a metallic marker or something like that. So I think this one could be tackled a little bit more. Steampunk's not my, like, go-to style. I prefer bright rainbow colours. But I can appreciate when you do sort of those vintage palettes. And I have done a couple of pages of it and it looks really good in that sort of steampunky vintage colourway. It's really quite neat. Very a bit different. Right, so this one is Designs by Coco Wayo and it is the Birds collection. So we have a bunch of different birds. pretty straightforward it's all in the name it's birds <laughs> it's just one I need to get to there is unfortunately no kiwis in here else I might have been tempted to get into it earlier but I still think it's a really neat one and also you know again suitable for alcohol markers all sorts of stuff Percy and the Park Keeper so I've never ever heard of this book series but it's so cute and I love these illustrations so it does make me want to approach these pages with like water soluble media and see if I can do some sort of like pastel watercolor techniques or something along those lines something very pastel and light and reflective I mean they are quite bright colored but they've got like really beautiful soft shading and I know, something about watercolours is calling me for this book. Colouring Heaven paper is not the greatest for watercolours, though. Mm. 
Right, the Alice in Wonderland special with designs by Eva Ninkunen. Really a gorgeous, gorgeous issue here. And I have a specific plan for some of these pages. Um, there's a couple of them that I know I want to tackle and how I want to tackle them. I just genuinely did not get to it. But I definitely have a plan for this one. Just have to get into it this year. Pet Rock. <laughs> this is who I've showed so many people because it's just so hilarious. Um, so it's pets dressed up as famous characters. I just, yeah. Just, just so funny. It's such a funny issue. It's so neat. And I've flipped it so many times with so many people to show off the issue. But I haven't coloured in it yet, so... Yeah, maybe this will be the year to colour in it. But I have, I do get great enjoyment from this one. The Elements Special with designs by Anne Stokes. So getting this Colouring Heaven issue actually made me go out and buy one of her books directly because I really loved the designs that were in here. Um, so I did end up buying her actual colouring book. I actually prefer her physical coloring books because in here this image is so small her books are quite a bit larger and so when it's zoomed out you just get these crisper details these bigger lot these bigger areas and um it's more focused on this but this one they had to because their books are square they kind of had to adjust a lot of the bits on the page and play around with some of the elements to make it fit it's still a really gorgeous issue and you know, if I didn't have access to the Anne Stokes colouring books, this would also still be a really excellent issue to colour in. Um, I mean, I'm good at colouring it this year, but yeah, it was something I noticed when I got her actual book of how much nicer the line work is in her actual book with it being a bit bigger. So yeah, another dragon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> The Flowers Collection, with designs by Dina Stone. So yeah, as it says, it's flowers. Now flowers aren't my favourite thing in the world. Um, I, I don't often get the desire to colour just flowers on its own, despite the fact I have several books that involve just flowers, but I might need to. Um, it's neat that it does name what the plants are, so I can look up references. I might need to sort of just sit down and like, find a specific flower I like the design of and look up references and just sit down and like try a flower if I find a flower that has an interesting meaning that might be a little bit more like inclination to also do the flower as well but yeah I don't mind flowers when these other elements on the page but flowers on their own is not really my favorite thing in the world that being said I do like how cleanly these ones are laid out you know, uh, there's a lot of room in the background for adding your own designs. And again, I could do markers. I could do all sorts of practicing of techniques on here. So I still think it's a great issue. I do intend to get to it. Just haven't got into it. <laughs> all right, we're getting there. Falwell? Farewell? Um, this is Nostalgic Designs by Norman feel well I didn't know what this was so of course coloring heaven is a British magazine so they do often pull on British elements such as this cartoon um, yeah so I hadn't heard of like we have a, a kind of similar situation here where we have this comic artist that does foot drop flats and like most people wouldn't know about it but if they released a foot trot flats issue, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. So I'm taking it along those lines of it being the artwork of the cartoonist. There are some really funny designs in here. Like, it's just, some of the designs are absolutely incredible. So, yeah, I nearly didn't get this issue because I was like, mmm. But then I was like, no, if I don't get it, I'm going to regret it and I'm going to have a gap. 
Um, the one issue that I didn't buy, the mandalas. Even though I don't do mandalas, I do regret the fact that there's like a number gap in my collection because that's the only issue I have missed. <laughs> so in that sense, I do regret it. The collector's bug. <laughs> Garden Nooms. This is designs by Ava Brown. When this one came out, there was a lot of mixed reaction. There was a lot of people who were very not into this issue. Um, I can understand why. Like, you know, it is very cartoony, but also I think that's the appeal of it. You know, it's, it's like, it's very sweet. It's very cartoony. I think it's quite cute, a lot of the designs. So... Yeah, I think it's a really cute one. I can see a lot of really bright colours and a lot of fun with it. So, I just need to get to it. And also, the Mushroom Friend. Like, the Mushroom Friend just gets me every time. I love that guy. I think he's meant to be a mailman or something. I'm not sure. But I love his little leaf hat and his little walking stick with a nail. Just little touches. Alright, Fantasy Kingdom Special, which is designed by Chris Ortega. This immediately made me go and look up getting her actual books because, oh my god. Like, the line work, the designs, just stunning. Gorgeous. So definitely, like, I want to get into here. I want to colour in here so badly. It's in, like... It's, I have my main collection on the shelf, but then I have like a stack on the side because the shelf was full. <laughs> so I try to keep the ones on the side that I like really, 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 really want to get to or like work in a lot. And this one is currently living on the side because I want to color in this one so badly. And I do want to actually get her actual books as well. And speaking of another one that lives on the side, the... Kanuko Ego Sar 100th issue special. I was waiting so long for this issue to come here. I was so worried because this issue sold out and they sold out so quickly of this issue. And of course, I am delayed and I wasn't sure if it was even going to make it here. I was not sure. And it not only arrived here, but an extra copy arrived here that I managed to pick up as well. So I did wait. I didn't steal it straight away. I gave time on the shelf for anyone else to collect it. And then at the end of the like sellable period, nobody had picked it up. And I let the shopkeeper know and be like, if that one doesn't go, I'm going to get it. But I'm going to let anyone else have that opportunity first. But if it doesn't go, I will grab that. So yeah, at the end of the two week period, when they could sell, hadn't sold, I picked it up. And I was so, so pleased to also get that backup copy because I have a special plan for it. But yeah, oh, I love Kanuko Ego Star's work. I love, love, love this issue. Again, I have not coloured in it. <laughs> but I do love the issue. I'm just like, I love it. <laughs> All right, we have the Grim Fairy Tales. So we're getting into another newer one as well. This is designs by Nalik Shoemaker. Um, this is another really cool one. Again, it's got the information on the side, which I really love because you can find what the fairy tale is if you don't know it, or you can learn a little bit about each of the, each of the designs. And they're really neat designs as well. And again, another... another artists that I hadn't heard of so really interesting designs looking forward to getting into that I like that the designs are a little creepy they're not like classic fairy tales they're grim fairy tales like they're actually to the more creepy spooky because originally these stories were like ways to make the kids behave so they're not the Disneyfication of the fairy tales which I really like Almost there. <laughs> right, we have the Tattoos Collection with designs by Hannah Lynn and Dina Stone. So, I talked about before about how I find Hannah Lynn quite difficult with the large, big, 
thick black lines. Um, I brought this one because I wanted to experiment with some different techniques. Uh, because I have done one where I completely painted over the lines and it was okay, but I've learnt better ways of doing it since then. Like when I first did it, I didn't do the right application of blocking out the lines. Like I've got different techniques I could do now because I do really like, you know, a lot of her designs. I just, I'm not a fan of these massive big thick black lines and the way the eyes are, but I've seen people who have taken these eyes and turned them into like big doll eyes and they like erasing parts of the lines and just things that people have done with these works I'm like that's really cool so this gives me the opportunity to sort of practice with it and then we have Dina Stone has some pages in here too of like different elements that might be a tattoo which I thought was really cool like you know it doesn't have to be a tattoo it's just a cute little design Yeah, I just thought they're quite neat little designs, so be a fun one just to colour in, pull out some markers and go for it. And then the last uncoloured issue, just quickly checking, I'm also just quickly checking I didn't miss, miss a page or something and put them in the wrong pile. But yes, the last uncoloured issue is Manga Fantasy Special with designs by Sonia Leong. Um, I know I want to color the merm in here there's some really cute designs i really like the action poses as well some really cool action poses so yeah this is another newer one and i just have not got into it i say newer it's not actually that new <laughs> i just haven't got into it but it's got some really cute designs and i need to get to it but yes, let me put this entire pile back on the shelf and grab the next pile, which is a pile I have coloured in. Alright, we have put away the big pile and we're back with another pile of Colouring Heaven that I have actually coloured in. So this one will probably take a little bit longer because these less books, but longer to go through them. <laughs> but now we get up to the really exciting part, the actual coloured pages. <laughs> So we're going to start off with Man Manga Fairies Special by Stanara. I'm probably butchering so many names. Oh, but this one is very cute. I do. Full of fairies. Super sweet designs. And I have done this one here. So I used a alcohol marker base. Which as you can see has transferred for a bit. It's the red. Every time I use this red... It does yellow the page behind it. So I always forget about that until I do the red. And I'm like, damn it, I'm not meant to use the red. <laughs> um, but it's okay. I'll figure out a way to fix it up on the next page. Um, so yeah, alcohol marker base. Polychromos pencils on top. Some Poskas for highlights. And then I also use some washi tape. Just to add some clove details, which I really like. And then a touch of metallic gold as well for the frame and her headdress. It's really quite simple. Um, I was really trying to practice using like an autumn autumnal palette. Which is not my forte, but I do enjoy it. And I did go around the outside with a green Posca. I do kind of regret that. Part of me is still tempted to go in here and paint this background out entirely. And then she would just pop that much more, like using like a dark brown, like a really dark brown would look really pretty back here and just fix that big white area and make her just sing even more. So part of me is tempted to go in there and do that still. We'll see if I ever do. <laughs> right. Legends of Japan which has designs by Maud Lamone. So I think I've done a couple in here. I have not pre-marked my pages because it's there's just too many to mark. Nope, just the one. This Kitsune. So this was one that was a work in progress in the previous flip through and it's now a completed page, which is always really exciting. So we did finish this one off this year. Um, so I started with an alcohol marker base and then polychromos pencils. Um, I used Liquitex Gold 
iridescent ink and then some deco art enchanted shimmer on the flowers so it does have like a really beautiful glittery shine on the flowers um, and just a touch on her lips and also on the mask um, and I had a lot of fun with her tattoos because the lines were there and I wanted them to be colorful but I didn't want them to be like overly colorful and so I actually just went over the lines with a very sharp polychromos pencil and it worked really well so yeah that one is complete now and I love when you add the black border and it just finishes the page and brings it all together though I did miss just a tiny little bit there so at some point probably next time I'm working on this book I'll just grab out like a black Posca and just over the edge and cover that bit up so yeah, and I really like Maud Lamone's designs. I also want to get some of her work. <laughs> I have quite a few of her books due to Colouring Heaven because she does feature often. But yeah, I wouldn't mind a few of her books. Right, this is Vintage Costume with designs by Jasmine Darnell. So this one was an interesting one. Uh, when I got it, I was like, I don't know if I'm actually going to work in it this much. But I really did do a couple in here and I really enjoyed it. The very beautiful, beautiful illustrations. And what I realized is they're kind of perfect for using the washi tape technique and doing some really beautiful clothing. So that's kind of what I've done with a couple of these. So I start by choosing a tape and then I feed my colors around the tape. So this one we chose this lovely floral pattern. And then I used polychromos pencils, the Liquitex gold acrylic ink, uh, this is just a Reno Art glitter gel, just like a rose gold glitter gel. Needed so many coats to get that sort of pigmentation. And a little bit of Posca just for the highlights and the eye shinies. So yeah, it's a lot of very carefully fussy cutting out the tape. And unfortunately the tape doesn't stack too perfectly. So you can kind of see some of the repeats, but it's not too bad, you know? It still reads to me as a tape. And I did shade on top to add the shading, but I've learnt now, because the tape is slightly see-through, you can actually shade underneath, but more extremely, like more dark, then when you lay the tape on top, the shading shows through. So that's how I'll approach these ones in future, instead of trying to shade on top, like I have here. And then we've got another one done in here, because I tried it with another tape, which is this one here. Um, so again, I chose my tape first, and I had this beautiful bright green and roses and dark green and I thought that was a really interesting colorway so I took the bright green and added it to the elements on the page and then for the dark green I was trying to make a uniform match it but I didn't really go dark enough to match it so it's still quite a bit darker but I still like it and then I thought the purple would be a good complementary to it and of course the gold Liquitex acrylic ink so it has got a bit of shine as well so yeah, I thought this is a really neat one in terms of clothing design. So I have a lot of fun with those two. I need to do some more in here. It's a good excuse to use your washi tape. Which means it's a good excuse for me to get more washi tape. <laughs> Alright, then we have the Mermaid Special. So this one has a collection of artists in it. And I know I've done some of the Mariola Boudic pages in here. And I think that's about it. Yeah, just, just the Mariola Boudex by the look of it. Alright, so we'll start with this one, which is Precious. Uh, this one started, the gold in the background is because I spilt my bottle of Liquitex Gold Acrylic Iridescent Ink. Honestly, if you see gold on a page that's an ink, it's 99% more, more, most likely the Liquitex Acrylic Ink, because I use it a lot. Um... But yeah, so that, the gold, I spilt my gold and I had piles of it all over my desk, so I had to use it up. So I was like, okay, we'll just make the background of this gold. Um, and then I used watercolors for her, um, and I really wanted a rainbow fish, so that was a lot of fun. And then she's got like a purple, green, and blue combination. A lot of fun with her tail moving up into the green skin. And then we've got stickles on top of the shells because more glitter and then I just used some random paint and inks to like splatter over as well almost like it's water bubbles 
So yeah, it was a lot of fun doing this one. And some Posca as well. And then the other one I've done here, which is another Mariola Boudic, because I really do like Mariola Boudic's work, is this page here. And ignore that, my niece decided she wanted to help me. <laughs> help me colour in the opposite side. Uh, so yeah, this one uses the Liquitex acrylic ink in the background. And did I use markers? Yeah, I used markers to base it. And then I used Polychromos on top to shade, Posca to outline, and Stickles to add that glitter. So she's got glitter on her eyes, her lips, and the bubbles. And the neat thing about this page is that Colouring Heaven actually shared this one. So that was a nice little like, oh, thank you. <laughs> to have that little nod of, you did good, let's share it. So I do forget to post in the Friends of Colouring Heaven Facebook group a lot. I'm bad at just being on Facebook in general. I'm just bad at social media in general. I find it very overwhelming at times. Right, the Fantasy Figures special. This is another issue by Maud Lamone. So I've got a few in here, including a few older pieces. So this is an older one. Uh, now I would do a lot more shading on it, a lot more contrast. It's very, very flat, especially on the skin. Uh, the skin needs a lot more shading. Uh, the wings and the glitter on the hat in the center of the flowers. That is a Crayola, one of the art range sets that they had. They had some glitter markers that they brought out. They're okay. I just use them to color it in as is. And the violin is the silver of it. And I think this one I actually used uh, Faber-Castell classic colors, like student grade pencils. I don't think they were my artist quality pencils. But yeah, this one's right at the start of 20, no, right at the end of 2021. So yeah, it's okay. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but it's an example of older art. I do like this one though. Uh, so this one, I was really focusing on trying to do a color palette that I don't do a lot of, which is like greens and yellows. I uh, still had to slip in some blue and purple. It's me, I couldn't not. <laughs> and I think this one is alcohol markers and watercolor. And then the Crayola glitter markers to add the shimmer, I believe. That was before I had like my Poscas or my Stickles or anything like that. Back in the day. And you can't see some bleed through, unfortunately. And then we have this one here. So this is another older one. Uh, so in this one, again, I love the color palette. It's not really a color palette I do a lot of. It's peaches, reds, and browns. Um, but I regretted, I did use green on the fan because my thought was, oh, we've got the green down here, the green down here. If I put green here, it will all tie together. No, it just focused your eyes here immediately. So big regret doing that green. I did use a gold metallic marker to go over it and sort of dull it down. Now I know like I could go in with some paint pens or I could go in and completely cover that up. But, you know, that was part of the learning. It was part of the experience and what we did is what we did so it's good to look back and go you know I know so much better now <laughs> and yeah I did go around her with a black ink pen as well and thicken the lines because I did want to make her appear more forward so I did give her thicker lines now I would do that in like a white or something just to instead of the black all right and then we have the Gift of Life. I love this one. This one is still one of my favorites that I did. I was really focusing on using my alcohol markers to practice shading and blending. So most of this is done in alcohol markers, like all her skin is, the dresses, the background. There is a little touch of pencils for the blush and then on the clouds itself because that was getting quite fine and I know that the alcohol markers liked to bleed. So and then I used a Posca to pull out some lighter areas of her hair. Um, and then this is when I first got my stickles as well. So this is like one of the first pages I did with stickles. I was just like, oh my god, I love stickles. Um, 
Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So that's Twinkle. I know that's Twinkle in terms of the stickles colour. It's the pink blue reflect. And then this iridescent marker on her necklace is actually from the Crayola Signature range. And they are the metallic markers. And they have one that is an iridescent marker in that set. And I wish they would produce it individually. Because I loved it so much. I used that one to complete extinction. And I was very sad when it died. Because it was just beautiful for adding a iridescent shimmer on top of stuff. But yeah, I love this page. And then we have this one here. So originally in the background it was like a hill setting. It was like a landscape. But this one I was doing for a prompt challenge where we had three words and we had to... It was an art challenge. So the idea was you created a piece but because I was a colorist I asked if they would be okay with me coloring a page and they're like absolutely um so this one we had space cupid and I think fear was the emotion um so in my mind she's like an alien cupid and instead of like making people fall in love she's like giving them the fear of love or like a fear of commitment I know that was kind of where my brain went with it I really like how far it pushed me to go so like covering up the background and turning it into like a, a space thing with like way too many stars um <laughs> and then i used a i think markers did i base some markers yeah i used some markers and then i used prismacolors posca for like line details uh this is gallery water soluble crayons this is like a homemade stickles using Mod Podge and loose glitter. And I still really like how it turned out. Like even without the story behind it, I just still think it's a really neat page. It's real interesting in terms of color usage and stuff too. And I like her green skin. <laughs> All right. I think there's another one in here. Oh, there's a couple more. All right. That one just has a frame around it, so that doesn't count as a work in progress. In the past, I've counted that as a work in progress because I've put a pen on the page, but I've decided to stop calling that a work in progress because it's literally just a border. And even if a page is done but I haven't colored the border, I consider it done. So I'm not considering this a work in progress anymore. Then we have this one here. Uh, when I colored this one, I was just very much going for your classic Barbie. She reminded me a lot of Barbie, so I wanted to color her like she was a classic Barbie. And I was really pleased with how I did her hair. Uh, so this is primarily alcohol markers. And then I did use a little bit of pencils for shading and a little bit of like the metallic markers for the center. A little bit of Posca in the eyes. Oh, well, maybe not Posca, probably gel pen actually. Gel pen, I didn't have my Poscas at that stage. So yeah, very, very classic color combination, very straightforward, but also, you know, I like it. I love her bright pink lipstick. And then we have this one here. So this was a, oh no, it's got something on the page. It's not good. It's something underneath. It's really not good. Okay, I'm going to have to fix that up after this video. Um, This was a work in progress that we completed in 2023 finally so it was originally based with some alcohol markers and I'd used like a chrome paint pen on the corners here but it was real streaky and yucky and I didn't like it so I added copper stickles over it and I really love how it turned out with the copper stickles uh, this one is one of my working the whips I believe on the channel apparently I got something on the page behind it so I'll have to put this to the side and make sure I remove all that and then that little dot that's come through I'll just put some white paint on it and cover it up that'll be fine <laughs> yeah I don't know how that happened but it happens you know and that's it for fantasy figures special We have the Strawberry Shortcake Collection. And I actually enjoy this book a lot more than I thought I would. Um, 
super, super cute images and just really, really fun to color. So I started this in bed one day when I was having a bad pain day and I just had, I just wanted to color and I didn't really want to think. So I just grabbed my Crayola Super Tips and I just colored it in as is, you know, nothing too fancy. And then I was like, oh, I wonder if I could put my pencils on top of the Crayola Super Tips and how that would look. Turns out it looks really freaking cool. So yeah, it's just Crayola Super Tips and then Polychromos pencils. And then I just pulled out the Posca for a couple of details. And it was really straightforward and really simple, but just came together really nicely. And I enjoyed it so much, I ended up doing a couple more. So this one I didn't do the Crayola Super Tips in the background. I just did it on the figures. Um, and then I just used the Polychromos pencils really lightly in the background. So you still got that like pastely faded out background. I really like that effect. I do wish I'd added a little bit more in the foreground just to make them connect a little bit with the ground. But I really like the cute little images here. Um, and then we have the Strawberry Shortcake and Custard. Same thing, Crayola Super Tips and Pencils. And I didn't actually pull my Poscas out on this one. So I didn't mind it that I didn't do the Poscas. And I think that's it. I think I just did the three of them. Yeah, just the three of them. Alright. We have Gothic Beauty. So this is another collection one. done a couple in here so I have this one by Alchemy Carter it's very kind of simple um, you know it's just her colored in pale skin wanted really dark wings and then like gold just wanted to keep it very simple um, and then I painted the background black but I was not very good at painting over all these lines. Um, I probably should come in and actually use like a Posca or something on the lines on all these like wiry bits that are extruding out. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> a lot of filming today. So yeah, it is just polychromos pencils a gold metallic gel pen and then black acrylic paint. Really simple, but I kind of dig it. Um, and then we've got this one here, the Dragon Mask by Sarah Richter. I really love Sarah Richter's work. Um, she was one of the ones that made me fall in love with Coloring Heaven. I have her Creatures of the Night special coming up. Adore her. Adore her work. So this one is actually just primarily ink tents. Lots and lots of ink tents. Um, and then the gold uh, acrylic Liquitex ink. And then I think maybe a touch of Posca just to highlight in here. But yeah, I really kept it quite simple. With this background, I didn't even like, I kind of blocked in colors, but it was just a lot of smushing color together and a lot of water on this page. So it did well considering how much water I put onto the page. But yeah, I really like how it turned out and I love the little red reflex in the bone. I think that really makes it. So yeah. I'm just ink tents. Primarily ink tents. And then we have this one here. So this one I imagine she was sort of like a elf orc hybrid warlock sort of character in a tabletop roleplay game. Originally it also had like a fan out to the side here and I didn't really care for that because I felt like it gave her mermaid vibes and I didn't want her to be mermaid -esque. So I just painted over that. I did unfortunately use the wrong black acrylic paint in the background. They changed their formula on me so it was no longer matte and instead shiny. So it is a shame because you can see all the texture and stuff in the background. That's why I normally use a matte black. So I try to ignore the shiny texture because without the shiny texture, it looks really good. With the shiny texture, no. <laughs> but as for her, I used Polychromos pencils, Fosca, and the Liquitex Gold Acrylic Ink. <laughs> so yeah, that's everything in Gothic Beauties. Halloween special! So this is another collection 
collection issue. So there's a couple of different artists in here. So the first one that I finished off this in 2023 is Masquerade Party. And this is by Hannah Lynn. So this was an experiment piece that I was trying to figure out a way to colour in Hannah Lynn's work without having the big thick black lines because I'm not a fan of the big lines. And so when I started this, I think in like 2022 or even 2021, I just used an acrylic paint on the background and that's not the correct technique. I know a better technique now, um, but back then that's how I started it. And I started shading in the face and it was just chewing through my pencils. It was turning out horribly. So I just kind of chucked it aside. Didn't really come back to it until 2023. So I just grabbed some more pencils and finished off the dress, did the mask, and then for the background I just grabbed the paint chubby stick things that I have and just sort of smushed some colour in the background and covered over the background details because the point of this page was an experiment and it was to learn from. So I just wanted to finish it to a point but I wasn't worried about completing it to perfection because I'd learnt all I was going to learn, learn off this page so it was more just completing it for me. So it was a bit of a rush job to finish it but it's done and again I've learnt what I needed to learn from the page which is that if I do remove the lines I do actually really like how it looks. I just I'm not a fan of these big thick lines but that's a personal choice you know we each have our things that we like and things that we don't like about colouring and so yeah for me not such a fan of the eyes but I like the shape of them and I like turning them into something so working with that I have a plan going forward all right and then I have are you my mummy by Simona Caldini this is another one that I finished off this year it was nice to get it done unfortunately the alcohol marker application in the background is not the greatest but we do we make do and i do love how she turned out and her little friends so this is based with alcohol marker and then i think i used prismacolor on this one in uh, posca pens and no glitter surprisingly that's very very odd for me <laughs> And then we have this one, which is another Sarah Richter. Uh, this one is alcohol markers and primarily alcohol markers. Again, it was another one that's focusing on doing a lot of shading with the markers. There is little touches of pencil just to help with the highlights. And then stickles for all the sparkly red bits. I don't even have any like Posca on there or anything. Very simple that one, but very, very cute. And then we have this one, which is one of my favorites in here by Inez Guerrero. Uh, so this one I use Distress Inks in the background and then alcohol markers, a bit of polychromos pencils and stickles and just a touch of gel pen on the lips to bring out some highlights. And again, it's a color palette I don't usually use, but I really like how it turned out here got a really neat vintagey sort of vibe. I think that's everything I have done in this issue. It is. Right, keeping with the Halloween vibes, we have the Bad Girls special. So this is the, I think this is the 2022 Halloween special. Um, and then the Halloween special is the 2021. Because of the delay, I didn't get these around Halloween. I got them a few months later. I'm really sad that in 2023, they chose to release a different book, a reproduction of issue 26 for internationals instead of making the Halloween special available to us, but, you know, delayed. So, yeah, I don't have this year's Halloween, uh, sorry, 2023's Halloween special. Um, and I am contemplating buying it off their website and getting it shipped to me so that I can have that in the collection as well. I will get the reprinted 26th issue when it does eventually turn up. Still on its way here. <laughs> um, so, first up is Frog Girl by Roso 
Oh my gosh. Rose Mama. I struggle to pronounce this every time. Um, but it's so sweet. I love this illustration. Like the little frog friend is so cute. Just checking. Yeah. So I did use alcohol markers to base it. And then some polychromos pencils to shade over for some extra shading. The like necklace and details are done in stickles, glitter glue, and then um, like a Freddy puff paint as well. It's got a really fun texture around here. <laughs> um, and then for the background, I used a stencil of leaves that I have and Distress Inks. And I really like how the background just kind of ties it all together. And then we have this one here, Forest Witch by Anne Marine. And for this one, I actually used Crayola Super Tips. Um, but the technique where you put them onto like a, I've got a thin plastic chopping board. So I scribble with the markers on there. And then I use a brush and a bit of water to pick it up and apply it like watercolor. So you can see there is a little bit of buckling of the page because Coloring Heaven is not the greatest for water soluble media. But it can handle a little bit and I don't mind a bit of buckling and I really like the effect of it. That sort of loose watercolor vibes the page. I just think it's really neat. And then I used a glitter gel pen just to color in all the berries. The Liquitex gold acrylic ink for all the gold elements. And then I also splattered some across the page just to add a little bit of sparkle and magic. Very simple. Oh, and a white gel pen just to do some basic highlights as well. And then, have I done another one of hers? No, I thought I had. So we have Midnight Spell by J.M. Liotti. And this one is entirely polychromos pencils. Um, normally I base first in a media and then use pencils to shade because it makes it a lot quicker when you do that. Covering a page entirely in pencils takes a long time. But for some reason I just wanted to work on this one in pencils directly, which was fun for a change. Um, and I really wanted to do the red sky as well. That's what started this whole piece, was just wanting to do a bunch of red sky. So yeah, it's an interesting colour palette for me, but I still really, really like it. It's very pale though, um, and that's because there is no basing it's just working directly on the page with the pencils so it needs either like more coats to get a more solid color or like a base underneath to help cover up some of the little white tooth that is coming through but at the time I was happy with it and happy to call it done and then there is a little bit of a brown metallic gel glitter pen just for some sparkly details and a little bit of gold as well And then, we have this one. So this is by Mitzi Sato with, um, probably not pronouncing that correct at all, <laughs> but this is done in the Crayola Super Tips again using the watercolor technique. And a little bit of stickles, Posca. Yeah, I think that's it. Stickles, Posca, and the Crayola Super Tips. It's a really fun technique. I really enjoy doing it. So, yeah. And this one, like, it could have been done steampunky, but I was like, no, nah, I want to do all the colours. I love all the kitties in the background. <laughs> Alright, is that it for in here? I think so. Yes, it is. So it was Bad Girls Special. Right, coming on with another seasonal special, we have the Christmas Special. So, I have this page here, the Christmas Kittens by Fabrica Fantasy. This one is entirely done in watercolors just really practicing water soluble techniques here so you can see again the buckling of the page but I don't mind that again I had a lot of fun practicing with watercolors and also just super cute just a super cute page 
then I think that's all I've done in here to be honest it is so yeah one page in the Christmas special a book that has a lot more pages done in it is Fledgling Fairies now this is my most completed uh, coloring heaven issue um, at the end of 2022 I was in a car accident out of town and I got stuck out of town for an extra two and a half weeks after having been away on holiday for two weeks and this is one of the few books that I had at the time and I really just needed to color to get myself like to because I was going for a lot with that car accident so I was fine I walked away with scratches and bruises no one else was involved it was I lost control on a gravel road but it was very terrifying for me and so I did a lot of colouring during this time um, and so yeah we've got a lot done in this book this one has got designs by Christine Karen and I actually have her wildflower folk uh, book as well but I'm not going to touch that until I complete this book and this one is so close to being complete I think I only got like 12 pages left to go it's pretty close to being done so it's possible that we will complete this in 2024 but I'm not pushing myself to do that so this one here is, if you have um, Christine Karen has a YouTube channel and it shows her beautiful use of color and how she like does all these really interesting techniques with color so it's really trying to pull on that in this piece and how she builds up a page with a lot of like greens and blues and yellows and pinks and it's a really interesting technique so it's trying to reproduce it a bit it's not identical but I do love how this one turned out so yeah watercolors in the background and then polychromos pencils and I think like some gel pens like metallic glitter and white gel pens on top for all the like random dots as well And then we have this one here so this again uses watercolor uh, I think I just watercolored over the whole thing and then I used my polychromos pencils to color in the specific details and a gel pen and then another one where I use the watercolor in the background and I was trying to again play with the different colors so I've got like yellow glow and then green glow and just playing with a little bit of lighting which is really fun and then glitter gel pens for the wings and yeah gel pens for the eyes I don't think I had my Poscas or my normal glittering things I think I only had a couple of glitter gel pens and then we have this one here I know I finished the fairies when I came home because I didn't have any silver and I really wanted to do them in silver um and I colored her a little bit inspired by me um, because I was like, I have glasses, I have green hair, I have a green sweater, uh, blue hair. My hair is very green at the moment. It needs re-dyeing. It's normally meant to be blue. <laughs> and I have a green sweater, or I had a green sweater that is kind of similar to this. I often wear purple lipstick. So yeah, it's just kind of trying to reproduce a little bit like me. Um, I like the fact that she's kind of creating magic out of the book, so... Yeah, and then a bunch of Posca for all the little details around it. Uh, this one is just done in polychromos pencils. I didn't add a background either. I just did the polychromos pencils, but I really love how it turned out. I love the dark skin with the light here. And then this one again is just polychromos pencils. And then I did use a bit of the glitter gel pens on the butterflies. Same again, I was working these pretty much in order as well, so it's just a lot of like <laughs> similar <laughs> at the start. Um, so yeah, the watercolour in the background, the glitter gel pen, the polychromos pencils. <laughs> uh, this one was just polychromos pencils. I do love this one. Oh, and a little bit of gel pen for the eyes and the lips because I wanted them shiny. I love her pink here. Such good pink here. Uh... Now this one I know I did when I returned home because I used wanted to use my Prismacolors for it because I knew I had like this neon pink. Um, and I looked up a specific type of pea bean, which is a hyacinth bean vine. Um, and they have like a bright pink edge to them. So that's what kind of inspired this one. 
the green and the pink. Summer Rain. This is a later on one that I did. So I did use, still use the watercolours in it. And then the Polychromos pencils to shade. But then I used a Deco Art Enchanted Shimmer on the top and it made it have like this beautiful iridescence to it and then with all like the water droplets that i use paint pens for and the splatter in the background kind of looks like rain uh part of the reason for the splatter was i actually had overspill from the next page so i just echoed the splatter a bit more on this one which you can see here on the overspill so this one this one uses um they're like a no-name brand pencil, Unity or something. Um, I was just testing them out in here. I really like the neon glow effect that I've managed to give here. But yeah, I wasn't happy with how I did the background. It was really streaky with these pencils. So that's why I pulled out the uh, Kaiser Craft Shimmer Spray and acrylic inks. And I was just chucking splatter everywhere. And it unfortunately... My protection sheet here got bumped and we got a bunch of overspills. So that's what led to a bunch of splatter on that one. Uh, so this one, this one was a lot of fun to do. So I put gesso on the page because I knew this paper is so thin that it wouldn't handle the amount of wet media I was going to chuck at it for this page. So I used gesso. And then I used a bunch of Liquitex acrylic inks and blended them all together um, and made this sort of galaxy background. And then over the actual illustration of her, I went over all her lines in a white Posca. So I started with a thin one and did all the thin lines. And then I used a thicker Posca and I thickened up certain lines so that certain details would appear bolder. Um, and then I was going to just add in a couple of yellow dots for the star sign, like the patterns on her wings. So they look like star signs, but then unfortunately my Posca decided to splurt everywhere. So we just ended up adding in a lot more and just going a bit all over the place with the yellow. I don't mind it. I wish it had like behaved and just been the dots like I was originally planning, but that's what it is. Right, spring ring. That's one that I've still got to do. Stolen Faye. So this one's a bit meh. Um, I coloured these two with Prismacolors and I was very happy with them. And then I went to, I coloured in the wings and then I applied a really cheap glitter glue that I had in my collection. And it just kind of went everywhere and I was not happy with the wings. And so I just kind of left it, like, maybe it needs a bit of a background and I'd like it a bit more or something. But yeah, I just wasn't happy with the wings. I did manage to clean up a bunch of the overspill because it did bleed out quite a bit. You can see just a little bit there. Um, I used Posca to go around and that did help cover up some of the bleeding. But yeah, not the greatest. And you can see just how badly it reacted there. So Odette we've still got to do. I think I've got a lot of these sort of more detailed fuller pages left to go. I've done a lot of like the single figure on its own pages. So over the rooftops. Uh, this one I was trying to do something. I can't remember what it was. I think I was just wanting to practice like trying to make fabric appear a bit more sheer. Um, and I think I was trying out some new media, like some new watercolors or something as well. I know it was definitely something where I went in with the intention of learning a technique rather than necessarily completing the page. So like I can look at this and I can tell like these should be darker. This could do with a dark blue glaze over it, for example, or, you know, there's no highlights. It's kind of flat, even with all the different colors. But I got out of the page what I wanted to learn from the page. So I'm happy to sort of leave it as is. This is another one where it's not necessarily about completing a page to perfection. It was about me learning techniques. So I called it, I called it done and I walked away. Um, and I did use the Deco Art Enchanted Shimmer just to go over the birds. So it'd have some shiny as well. Uh, the magical flute we still got to do still got to do troll girl and then we have angel eyes I love this one 
think this one turned out really, really well. And the surprise of it was the background. Um, I used, this is my first time using some paint sticks that I randomly found and just smushing it all over the background. And I just love how metallic and shiny it is. And it just makes this pop so much, especially with her like dark lips. And yeah, just a lot of playing around with silvers and greys and it turned out really cool. So the base of this is alcohol markers. Most of this is alcohol markers. I don't even think I used any pencil now that I look at it. Yeah, no, I think this entire thing has been shaded in alcohol markers. And then stickles for the glitter. Um, and then Posca. And then, yeah, like I said, the paint stick for the background. They're called, like, Chubby's paint sticks. They're designed for three-year-olds, but they work. They're good. <laughs> Uh, Dreamy Bay, I love this one. So, in the last, in 2023's Complete Collection Tour, I did have to go over this with a layer of Mod Podge to seal it all down. Um, I'm thinking I might, I thought I had done it. It feels like I have done it, but I've got little flakes on there. It might just be like some little bits that I missed or something. But I'm pretty sure I did go in and actually seal this one down. Yeah, I can see a film on there. I might not have sealed on here I might have just like sealed around the edge or something but yeah the background and her uh, alcohol markers a little bit of polychromos for shading we've got a white gel pen stickles for the wings and then over the uh, marker in the background I have this like chunky glitter gel that I applied all the way down but it used to flake up quite a bit so I sealed it down with some Mod Podge and then we have Bay Darling. I love how this one turned out. So again, alcohol markers, polychromos pencils, um, stickles, glitter for the wings and the butterflies. And then this is alcohol markers at the base here, but the sky itself is done with distress inks and a stencil. And then we have the Wood Elfling. This one is just done in polychromos pencils with a little bit of gel pen. This is another one when I was post car crash. Uh, fairies with Fox Baby. So this one uses Crayola Super Tips and using the same technique that I used in the Strawberry Shortcake book. Uh, so Crayola Super Tips and then polychromos pencils to shade. And I used a deco art um they have like a glittery top coat thing i was trying it out it's like a super fine glitter rather than like the bulk of stickles so i was just trying it out here it's a very pretty one i was very worried about it potentially bleeding through with these being water soluble markers but it actually held its own so not too bad uh, still got to do the fairy flower crown we have fairy dust so this, these wings were done in dragonfly glaze, I think, from, I'm pretty sure it's dragonfly glaze that I was trying out. My mum got some, so I just was trying it, seeing how it went, definitely want. Um, and then distress inks for the glow around her, alcohol markers for her base, polychromos pencils, a gel pen, and stickles. And I dotted the gel pen and then dotted some of the stickles in her palm too to really make her sure it looked like she's blowing magic. Which I really like how that turned out. Sugar Plum Fairy. Now I believe this one is on the channel. Um, this one, it was about pink. I just wanted to do lots of pink. <laughs> so all the pink. Uh, so it's alcohol markers. We've got glitter gel pens, stickles, Posca metallic um, gel pens, and distress ink with the stencil in the background. So yeah, lots and lots and lots of pink, but I really like, I really like how pink it is. <laughs> uh, so we have seedling. So this one was coloured with polychromos pencils and then distress inks with my stencil for the background. Stickles glitter glue over all the little elements. Very simple, but I like it. Leaf Rider. So this one I was playing with 
the light effects. So she's more yellow on the side and more red on this side. Uh, just playing with light versus cool and trying to make it look like the light is coming from one side. And then also playing with sheer translucent fabrics again. Probably shouldn't have done the Posca outlines that I did here. Or I should chuck some Posca into her hair. Just so that it coordinates. But I do like how it turned out. And... You know, this is another watercolour one where I was just playing around with watercolours and then pulling, using the pencils to pull out more details and the poskas and, of course, the glitter. This book is perfect for so much glitter. Speaking of so much glitter, <laughs> this one is also on the channel. I believe it's one of the Working the Whips. Um, so this has got watercolour, Prismacolour pencils, Posca and a bunch of different different stickles lots of different stickle colors very very sweet and colorful i think this one was for february so it's like a valentine's fairy very cute um and then we have this one here uh so alcohol marker base polychromos pencils and then stickles and then i did end up grabbing distress ink and going around the outside just to sort of set it a little bit more plus it picks up on the little purple and all these little purple floaty bits i added in as well because i felt like it just needed something and i love the idea of the flowers falling away um, and this one we were playing with opposites so we have cold and warm tones like ice queen and fire you know playing around with different tones of course the red red alcohol marker always bleeds through all right so we have fairy magic which i finally went around the border of it's not the cleanest border application so i do need to grab my posca and a ruler and just clean up the edges a little bit um but it did turn out really nicely in the end for a page that i kept on screwing up on so I used alcohol marker base and polychromos pencils on her. And then I applied the terrible glitter glue that kind of spread everywhere in the background. It didn't work that well. Um, and then I think I used distress inks in the background. Or water, water, um, water colours. And then Reno Art glitter gel over the background as well. Just so the background had a little bit more and to help with some of that streakiness. Um, I did smudge it, so unfortunately there is like a big section here of glitter that is only meant to be on the background, but it's okay. Again, I really like her colour palette. It's not a colour palette I do often. But yeah, the wings aren't perfect, and like I said, I've still got to go up and clean the border, but I still consider this one done. Because when I do complete the book, I'll probably sit down and like, clean up borders and just make sure everything's nice and neat you know uh, and then we have this one here which is entirely done in watercolor pen uh, watercolors and then liquitex acrylic inks as well and then a touch of posca for the highlights and the last page in this issue is whimsy fairy so this uses alcohol markers, polychromos pencils, and glitter gel pens, and glitter gel paints. Um, so the, when I applied the glitter, it was the terrible cheap glitter that bled everywhere. And you can see a little bit down here of how the alcohol markers got activated and spread because of what's in these cheap glitter gel paints. I try not to use them anymore. Um, so I had to, I went in and turned this into like tattoos uh as if she had like vine tattoos going up her leg and i kind of like how that turned out so it was a way to fix up an accidental issue on the page so yeah and it's neat seeing her and like again brown tones there's a few few brown tones towards the end of this book i don't normally do neutral but i guess she needed to be neutral and that is the last page you just have to trust me on that because again i had this book when i had my car accident so the very back page of this book of that page has like a bunch of like phone numbers and stuff about the police that i needed and insurance information so <laughs> we won't show that one 
All right, Gothic Fantasy Special. This is designs by Ines Guerrero. And I have just the one done in here that we completed off this year. It's an old work in progress. It's so nice to complete it. I say this year. I'm recording this in 2023. It's going out right at the start of 2024. I do apologize for the mixing up of the years. So this is the moon. Although I think I kept calling it Moon Dancer. Um, I do love how this turned out. So I originally based this in alcohol markers and the color I grabbed for the background was too dark so I lost all this beautiful patterning. The background, the dress kind of turns into the ocean waves and it comes up with all the sea splatter and I lost all that. And it was a real shame because it was real pretty. Um, so again I shoved it aside because I didn't know what to do and then I randomly pulled it out one day and we used Prismacolor pencils. And I shaded her in and I wanted to add like a blue glow, like she was glowing from the blue mount, blue moon. And then um, lots of glitter and sparkles for all her jewellery and stuff. And I knew I wanted her hair really, really light so it would stand out against this background. And then for the background itself, because there was originally splatter but it was kind of all covered up and... You couldn't see much. I just grabbed out the Kaiser Craft Shimmer Spray and just spritzed that everywhere and just kind of went messy and foamy. So it's kind of like clouds in the sky or sea or it's just abstract now. But I love how it turned out. So considering how unhappy I was with it when I did originally use the markers on it, it's nice that it came together in the end. And of course a ton of stickles on the moon. So much stickles. <laughs> We have the Nickel Girls special. This has got Anime Cat Girls by Dina Stone. And I believe I've done a couple in here. So I have this first page, which has been done with primarily alcohol markers and then a little bit of stickles. Um, I don't even think I use paint pens or anything. I was just really trying to practice with my alcohol markers. So just really trying to practice getting highlights and tones. In different shades in with the markers and then I have also done this one here which we finished off this year so again based in alcohol markers and then I did pull out some pencils for shading on her skin um, I used stickles for all the glitter and then I used I have some metallic pens that I had tried out they're like an alcohol pen but the metallic um, I just got in them, so I thought I'd try them out on the controller as well. Um, so the controller, the headphones, and the bangles are all done in those metallics. It's a very common combo for me to do, like, a base material, pencil, shading, stickles, and a gel pen. It's kind of like the common combo. <laughs> Right, Ancient Egypt. So this has a work in progress. There's very few work in progresses this year, which is really nice to, to show off. Now this one is a work in progress that I had in the 2023 complete collection tour. So this one is definitely a priority to finish or fix up or figure something out. Um, so yes, this is the Ancient Egypt special by Fabiana Truri. Uh, I used the Unity really cheap pencils that I got and I was testing them out because I had just picked up this issue. I was like, oh, let's just go for it. And I start coloring and I'm like, I hate these pencils. They're scratchy. The pigment's not even in them. And yeah, I just never came back to it. So I have an idea of what I can do to help fix it up. I just need to get to it because I do love this image. I have a page in Seasons and we have this page from the winter section of two cardinals on a Christmas lamp. And so I used Distress Inks and Kaiser Craft Shimmer Spray in the background and then the actual lamp itself is based in alcohol markers and I used Polychromos pencils for all the shading. A little bit of Posca to bring in some highlights and of course stickles in the center for the flame.
In this one we've got some really fun light sources. So the light itself is a light source down here, but then there's also a top-down light source. So yeah, had a lot of fun with that and colouring in the beautiful cardinals. Right, winter gnomes. So this one has a variety of designs including a bunch by Mariola Budic and I can tell you right now it's the Mariola Budic ones I have done because I did them all for Christmas 2023. <laughs> so we have this gorgeous guy here. Um, this is a mixture of alcohol markers, polychromos pencils, stickles, Posca and then in this one I did do a background with Distress Ink and I also have like a little tree stencil that I was using as well. And I did spritz some water just to make it a bit more splotchy and blendy in the background. But yeah, these ones are really straightforward. They're really fun, really quick little illustrations. Chuck down some alcohol marker, define the shadows a bit more, pencils, Posca for some sharp highlights, and then stickles for some fun. It's my regular go-to with Mariola Boudic, and a lot of things, but particularly with these Mariola Boudic ones, as you can see here. It is alcohol markers, polychromos pencils. I don't think I... Oh no, I did do a little bit of Posca on the nose. There's really not much of a highlight here. Um, and then of course, stickles. And I think I used a little bit of acrylic ink or watercolour, just something that I had out and open at the time, just to add a little bit of ground here. Um, but it was primarily about the stickles and having a um, colouring in the presence entirely in glitter. And yes, every single element of the presents is covered in stickles and it's all different coloured stickles because I have that many stickles. <laughs> and I still had more stickles I could have put on the page, but I was like, the gladdest step present stack is enough. But I freaking love it. I love it so much. So much glitter. And then we have this one, this outer gnome. So again, alcohol markers, polychromos pencils, Posca. And instead of stickles, this time I used a 3D puff paint. It was pearly. Um, it's okay. It was very difficult to apply. I think I ended up trying to use a brush because I could not squeeze it out of the tube for the life of me. So, yeah. It's not my favourite thing in the world. It has resulted in some texture on the page. And just with how difficult it is for me to apply, I don't often use them. And they kind of just go to waste. I should probably find someone else to pass those on to. And then we have the Reef Gnome. So this one I did not use stickles. It is alcohol markers, polychromos pencils, Posca, and then a little bit of Distress Ink over the letters. I did this because I knew the marker was going to bleed everywhere and I just didn't want to bother with that. So I did cheat and just used the Distress Ink to hide the bleed of the marker. <laughs> I did try. I did really try to get the letters in here smoothly, but it just bled everywhere. So I was like, screw it. Distress Inks. That would be a good one to put some gold glitter on, but I felt like I didn't really need the gold glitter. And then we have the reindeer gnome. So this one is alcohol markers, polychromos pencils, Posca paint pens, and stickles glitter glue. And then this one also uses some of the alcohol metallic markers that I have too. And I think that's it. That is, that's as far as I made it. But it's quite a few of them done in there. I really enjoy the Mariola Budic illustrations. Right, Little Cuties special with designs by Daria Kaikaroski. And I think it's just that one that I have done. It is. So we have this page here. Um, so, I think this is the page where I spilled the alcohol, the gold Liquitex acrylic ink. Ended up having to use it on a bunch of different things. So, this one uses watercolour. And I think I... Oh, no, I didn't use alcohol markers. I think I actually used watercolour as a base for everything. And then I went over it with my pencils to shade. Um, and then I was doing a really thin coat of the gold acrylic ink here because I was trying to keep it quite translucent uh, and then I definitely use the DecoArt Enchanted Shimmer 
topper in the pink and it made this really pretty rose gold iridescent color here a little bit of stickles for the bubbles yeah quite a simple little palette but it was fun it's fun doing little mermaids and little simple pages sometimes I think that's everything that they've done in there it is it's such a cute book fantasy creatures special so this has a combination of really cute creatures from selena fennec but then really detailed monsters by chet minton it's a really interesting combo in terms of like really detailed stuff but then also really simple stuff so i quite like it and i've done this kitsune this was also done because of the great ink spill <laughs> so yeah this was another one i had around me i was like cool we'll make the moon gold because there's another place i could use up the gold um, and then for the actual figure and Kitsune themselves, I had some um, acrylic inks that I was working with on another project left over. So I was just like, I'm going to try using acrylic inks on the page. So this entire thing is done with Liquitex acrylic inks. And I really like how it turned out. The paper's not the greatest for it. Um, so it does have like some little texture from the ink. And it is more like cell shading, but I really like how it turned out. And it was a really fun experiment. Very Topia special. Designs by Mystic Art Mirrors. So this one I started doing a bit in towards the end of 2022 when I was finishing up my psychology degree because I would be doing essay, 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 exam prep, essay, exam prep, project, project, you know, lots and lots of stuff. I was very overwhelmed, but I needed an excuse to take a half hour break. And I had this issue and I was like, you know what? Grab the markers, go for it. Half an hour, done, back to study. So I ended up doing a few in here. Um, and yeah, so they are just very simple alcohol marker shading and then I would grab stickles or something shimmery and add a little bit of sparkle. Um, this used up the last of the Crayola Signature Iridescent marker, which was very sad about, but I do like how it turned out. And then stickles, um, some glitter gel pen and then alcohol marker. And again, alcohol marker, a little bit of gold metallic gel pen. Keeping it very simple. This one is alcohol marker and like the 3D puff paint, but I tried to brush it on so it would stay really flat. I didn't even get back to doing a bit of shading on this one. It's still very flat in terms of the color, but I really like the color choices I chose. Um, this one, which is alcohol marker and then the glitter gel paste that I had that I then also had to mod podge over to make sure it all stuck down properly did cause the blue to bleed out a bit um, and then we have this one here which I also alcohol marker and then the glitter gel the very cheap ones that cause the bleeding which you can see quite a bit more on here and it didn't affect anywhere else too badly but it really badly affected the skin and we got these really big patches on it it was really sad because i really liked it but i ended up putting it aside until it dried and then grabbing out my posca and just making these patches on her skin like she has vitiligo i think that's how it's pronounced the skin condition where you lose pigmentation i thought it was a really like it naturally created these pigmented spots where she had lost pigmentation it's like that's really beautiful actually so yeah, I really love how it turned out in the end and it's something I wouldn't have tried except for an accident because of the terrible cheap glitter glue that I no longer use. Um, and then we have this bunnies one, which is just alcohol marker. I don't think I even did any pencil shading. I think it's just all alcohol markers. So yeah, that is very Topia special. We're almost there. Dinosaurs. So this one has designs by Sergi Kazowski. 
uh, Ukrainian paleo artist. I didn't even know paleo artists were a thing, but that's really cool. Um, so I have done one page in here, and it is the Gigantiosaurus. I'm not a dinosaur kid. I will admit this straight up. I am not a dinosaur kid, and I don't... I almost didn't get this issue as well. But I had a friend who got this issue and wanted to um, colour along with me. We haven't managed to sit down and actually do the colour along yet, but at some point we will. Um, so I picked it up, picked up a copy for them, and then picked up a um, copy for me. But normally the store that gets the magazine, they have like maybe at max four issues that come in. So they don't get a big range. Usually they only get like one or two and they immediately hold one aside for me every week because they know, every fortnight, sorry, because they know it's me. Um, but yeah, they usually only get one or two issues, sometimes four. They got like 12 of the dinosaur issue. Like they got a lot. It's like, you're not going to move all them. Um, and so what I did was I was like, if I go upstairs and color one of the dinosaur pages, would you like to have it back and then put it in the window and then hopefully it'll help you sell some of the magazines? Because they're a really lovely mum and pop store. They're so kind to me and, you know, looking after me. And there's been a couple of times I've gone in to collect my magazine and I've forgotten my wallet. And they're like, yeah, no, you just come back next time and just let me take the magazine without paying for it. And then I just pay for it next time. And they're really, really lovely. I can't thank them enough. So when this came in, I was like, this is something I can help with. And so they're like, yeah, I mean, that would be really cool. I was like, okay, so to make you change your window display, give me like three hours. <laughs> and so I raced upstairs um, and I did film this. This is actually a YouTube video as well. Um, so I used, I know I used Distress Inks in the background with my stencil and then Posca to do the lightning. Um, and then I think I was actually using the Unity pencils because I was originally thinking, oh, I'll stick with like, generic stuff that anyone could access and try and not use fancy media but then I did use Distress Ink and Poscas and stuff like that because yeah I was like now nah, let's go for the looks because it's about bringing people in to buy the issue um so yeah we colored this all in and then I raced it back downstairs and they put it in their window on display and it did help sell a couple of extra copies so I was very pleased with that I keep meaning to do that, like, every time they get a new issue in, if they get a lot of them, race upstairs, finish a page immediately, and then race it back down to them, because the shop is directly under me as well, for ease of access. Um, and then they can display it in their window to help them sell some of the issues if they get a lot of them. Bit time. All right. Gods and Goddesses Specials. This is another one by Jash Lee. There's another one I want to do a lot more in this year because it is really gorgeous and I love, I love mythology and there's some really gorgeous representations in here. So, but the one we have done is Aphrodite, which is the first page. <laughs> Often if I get a magazine and I don't know where to start in the Colouring Heaven ones, I'll just start with the first page. Um, so this one I actually used Crayola pencils for. I was trying out the Crayola ones. And then I used a glitter gel pen for the armor, um, the Crayola signature glitter gel pens for the birds. The background is watercolor um, and then acrylic paint, but not a very good application of acrylic paint in the background for the border. Um, I did use like a black fine tip marker so I could get like right around the edge and right in all these little details and then I could go big and wide with the black paintbrush to block out the rest of it without worrying about like overspill but there's quite a noticeable difference so this is probably one I'll clean up eventually again if I ever manage to finish the issue the theory is is that once the book is complete you then do a clean up section where you go through and like clean up these borders neater or you know just if you miss a highlight with a Posca, go in and add a dot. Just to clean up to make the book complete. But yeah, that is the only one I have done in this issue. But I'm hoping to get a bit more done in here. 
Flower Girls issue. So this is a combination by Mayumi Ogihara and Anastasia Koldava, Koldareva. <sighs> Names. <laughs> so I've only done the images by Mayumi Ogihara. So I would like to get the other artists done in here as well. Um, and you can see a bunch of overspill, a yellowing of the page because of the red alcohol marker. But we have this one here. So this is a working the whip on the YouTube channel. Um, was an old whip for a long time. I had used alcohol markers to base it. And I think I'd done a little bit of pencil work, but I hadn't completed it. So I did go in and add a little bit more. Um, and then I added in stickles for all the center of the flowers and also the leaves and Posca for her eyes. And then for the background, because it gave me almost like stained glass vibes for some reason. So I used the Chubby's paint pen and went over the background for this beautiful gold metallic. And then I used a black Posca to outline her. So yeah, it's really simple, but really effective. And the flowers originally, I think I thought they were poppies, so I was just calling them as poppies. I then realized that anemone is actually a flower type when I was Googling it. <laughs> so, yeah, I could have just looked at the name. <laughs> but I really like how this one turned out. And as I said, I would also like to get to the other artist in here. Oh, that's my Yomi. Like, I really like her style too. So, I would like to do... Another one in here from the other artist. Then our last, last issue, which is the oldest colouring heaven I own. Sarah Richter's designs in the Creatures of the Night special. And the reason why this is last is because it has my favourite ever page in here. And it's still one of my favourite ever pages that I've coloured. So it does also have some older works in here. Uh, let me just get rid of the little tab up there. So this is, again, one of my older works. This is just Prismacolors. Um, I think a little bit of a metallic gel pen as well. Now I would do things in the background and push the shading a little bit more. But it's neat to have sort of older, older pages. Same with this one. Uh, Prismacolor. Didn't even like fully blend the little pieces of fabric holding down. <laughs> and then this one I was using uh, water soluble pencils and again there's not much contrast in there it needs a background it's screaming out for a black background like the techniques that i'd use now are very different but it's fun to see where you started from um and then this one which is one that i was trying to do when my hands first started flaring up really badly so like the background lines with the gel pen are so so messy um the like you can still see some of my strokes in the water soluble media i think that's why i was using the water soluble pencils so that i could melt them down um yeah i think this is one of the ones when i was first learning to control my hands again so it's not great but you know we did it we learned we used it as a process to retrain the hands and we got there in the end um and then we have this one uh, I did have a thing too, I did initially think I was going to cut out the pages and frame them. Again, this is one of the first colouring books I own, so I did cut a bunch of pages out of this book. Do regret that. But yes, this is a whip that was completed finally. It had been in progress forever. Um, so I did mark, use alcohol markers on the base. Um, and then I came in later on with polychromos pencils and shaded her all up. Um, and then I used Liquitex Gold Acrylic Ink. No, Kaisercraft Shimmer Spray, I'm sorry. And then Distress Ink with a little bit of a stencil that has like a circle pattern. And so I used that circle pattern on her face to add in some circles and some shading because there were like little scales drawn in so i just amplified that with the um, stencil and the distress ink and then i added those same circles to the background and then the kaiser craft shimmer spray on top and i really like how it turned out it did start off similar to the other work in progress in this book which is the children of the night this has just got alcohol marker base at this stage uh, still needs entirely working over 
At least it's the only work in progress in this book now. And then the only other one that's in here and completed, I believe it is, is Keeper of the Fire. And we ended on this one last year and we're going to end on it again this year because I still absolutely freaking love this page. It was a lot of work, but I was so proud of it, and I'm still so proud of it, and I still really love it. So it is alcohol marker base, and then polychromos pencils with a touch of Prismacolor for the candles to get that, like, French grey. And then Posca for the glow of the candles as well, to do the bright white on the candles and the highlights of her eyes. And this is the first time I ever did non-metallic metals, where I wasn't just chucking down a gold gel pen or something for the metals actually focusing on shading the metals and really focusing on like how this page would work if the candles were the only light source and how that reflected off stuff it was a lot of work but i love this page and i still love how it turned out oh so much and again originally i cut these out because i was thinking i was going to frame them i didn't even cut them straight it's like not good not good so i kind of have to live very carefully in the issue but there we go. Oh my god. We have through the colouring heaven one. I knew this one would take a while. But oh my god. We're there. I am going to go put these all back on the shelf. And go and take a rest. And rest my throat. And drink a bunch of tea. Because that was a lot of talking. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed. For anyone who watched this entire video. Thank you so much for making your way through. I would love to hear down below any thoughts you have about any of the pages, if there's books I need to work in, if there's something that you'd like to see done. Do you have an issue and you're like, hey, I want to work in this one too and you want to like buddy up so we get some work done in these issues? Let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys and I really appreciate it when you like comment and like and subscribe and just let YouTube know that, hey, this video is cool and you should you know, share it around because it really does help the channel and I do appreciate it so, so much. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye!